Hello everybody, welcome to this Marvel Avengers Alliance video here on G4G. Today's music is brought to you by Random Chiptune Mix number 27, a link will be in the description. And today we are going to do a theory video or a conjecture video on what might be the metas that we'll see in Marvel Avengers Alliance Season 32. Uh, it may sound a little early to do this video, but we did have a brief scare in the middle of the week that PvP could be coming up shortly due to the fact that they talked about the next PvP hero and everybody was preparing thine anus size. I know it's anuses. Everybody was preparing thine anuses for potential re-entry. But, of course, we didn't get any PvP, and that would be ridiculous to end it on a Monday and give it to us on a Friday. But in 2016, they actually have pulled off something similar. So, the reason why I wanted to do a video like this, and I haven't done one like this yet, is because I recognize the fact that Season 32 is going to be batshit insane with all the metas that are going to be going on out there and what we'll be facing in the wake of FISA and everything. I'm not going to say like Stormbird is really going to affect things but FISA has swept in and definitely cast a shroud over everybody's thoughts for the next season and I'm in a lot of conversations about FISA with my Facebook Marvel friends and in groups and discussions in the video. Songbird's coming up and people are like, well, what do you think about Songbird? How's she going to play out? So I just thought I would do a video on it and kind of give you guys what I think is going to happen. And we can use this as a good sounding board. So the first thing that i think we will see is definitely going to be a continuation of the drain meta now the drain meta typically overlays with other metas you know at least in this case the psychic meta from last season but it is entirely possible to do a drain meta and not use the psychic set from the last spec ops a lot of people tended to do that simply due to the fact that the Psychic Gear uh, had a, a few debuff tags in it and, you know, that made it quite viable for the Drain meta. However, you can definitely get through making a Drain team without using Psychic Items. Puts a little bit more reliance on the heroes you bring with you and whatnot, but you can definitely do a drain meta and not have that last suit. Which, of course, jumping in from there, will deal with the fact that we're probably going to still have a psychic meta hanging out there. And even though the psychic set got nerfed about two-thirds of the way through the last season and whatnot, people still continue to shoehorn it in and ride out both their offense and defense with psychic gear. Now granted the TOE kind of shuts it down, Kurth and her popularity shuts it down for herself and there were other heroes that were talked about like Juggernaut and Magneto. Counter psychic heroes didn't show up too much, at least not Ada and higher into Ada. Now, please understand from the perspective of this video, unless I say otherwise, you're going to be hearing me speak from the level of somebody who was in Ada. I don't know what happened in Diamond and Vibranium after I left it, but I didn't really see Magnetos and Juggernauts out there to prevent the Psychic set. Kurth was already in place so you can't say people used her to be anti-psychic. She was already, you know, top five to begin with. But the tactician suit, with the toxic suit, which is often tied to the drain meta and the psychic meta, is going to have a problem. And that's the next meta that we're going to see is what I'm going to call the residual meta. And that's this suit. People who continue to run Tacticians on defense may be in for a very, very rude awakening. 
I've been playing around with this suit a lot lately just to create extra attacks and like FIZA and everything like that. Um, this suit with its weird telescoping giraffe neck and, and second, uh, second hand over here that just floats above and holds the cosmic cardinal in a different dimension from the rest of my body. Um, this suit represents essentially angrier skittering darkness is what the residual meta will do not only does it set up the residuals team to be essentially a neurotrope without the rising up they're going to be stealthy and that's why i say it's like skittering darkness it sort of replaces one of the better and unique things about Angrier is the fact that the agent can not only turn his entire team into infiltrators for counters, stealth is coming with it. I don't know how many people have really processed that. It's not just the fact that he gives the team counters. He makes them fucking stealthy. That is one of the very best things about Angrier, especially modern Angrier after the possession and purge got fixed and whatnot, is that a fact that he just makes everybody invisible. And potentially, that means a lot of people are going to be needing to run off balance and hobbled out there. So we might see like a lot of heem dolls as a counter to a counter and everything like that. You might see satellite supports making a huge comeback and trying to turn off the stealth that this agent may do for everybody. Um, so so that's going to be a big thing. We're, we're going to be dealing with a residual meta and people who run tacticians on defense like, here's your notice. I mean, I, I'm not giving you a ticket right now. You weren't doing 50 and a 35. But I'm kind of giving you a warning for doing 39 and a 35. Tacticians... Yeah, they, they, they might be on the short order coming up. So, we have the residual meta. We have the drain meta. We have the psychic meta. The next thing that we have to deal with... And this is the big elephant in the room... FISA. FISA is going to kind of come in with this angelic chorus behind her. This and this white light. And, and she's just, she's going to change the landscape. She comes in and sort of in a way does what Haith used to do. She doesn't quite have that heal. But she brings with her one of the very best things that Haith used to do. And then adds a whole bunch of stuff both offensive and defensive. And there's two ways that Fiz is going to change the landscape of PvP. One is a more offensive tilt and one is a more defensive tilt. And you can see that in my Fiza doll video. And you can see how this is going to change things a little bit. Defensive Fiza is going to bring back the olden tanks of Sparta. The, the big flanks wall of immovable objects. And I really have my eye on Colossus for this one. Groot and Rescue below Ada will probably make an appearance. I would say, you know, the Diamonders and the Golders and the, the Vibraniums and everything like that might reach into that dustbin and pull Rescue out, get her her great ISOs that she has, slap in majorly defensive heroes, tacticians and bruisers, uh, defensive tilted armory, and run FISA and then like Rescue and Groot and just make obnoxiously tough teams to take down. You'll have flashbacks to the P5 Colossus explosion with Emma, Groot for the Guardians of the Galaxy times, even maybe Volstag with his covered, um, Rescue, and you might think of how like Rescue and Omega were annoying, or Rescue and Falcon were super annoying in the last day of PvP. You might see FISA do that. 
at the higher levels, I think Mid Vibranium into Ada, I definitely think she can pull P5 Colossus back out. I really do believe that. Now, we know that he enjoyed a resurgence back when he was paired up with P5 Emma. And his Guardian Force was ridiculous. Even though he exists just fine with Kurth, because essentially it's like double... It, it's double covered at that point in time. It's got Kurth nerfing your damage, and then you have Colossus nerfing the damage by putting covered out if you have his ISO. So not only is he hardy, but he's making the whole team hardy, and he is he's got a heal to himself and if you slap benediction with that it's like oh my god why am i bothering i will never beat this he went away when emma went away when the covert iso got nerfed even though he didn't necessarily have to he could have existed with kurth and still been really good the thing is on defense, obviously, Kurth takes a while to get going, and she can spam Love Me, and most Colossus eyes, most Colossus eyes, most colon bags, um, really were not known for their damage as they were for their protection. However, he does have that wonderful ISO that allows him to counter people, uh, which I don't have, unfortunately, but, you know, and when he had Scootum, I mean, yeah, ridiculous. I think Scootum, Bruisers, like Colossus and everything like that, will definitely make a comeback with Fiza protecting them. We know she triages in round one, so that could mean that people will forego Mystic and Lamps for other gear, banking on their Fiza doing that for them. So that's, that's going to be interesting. Offensive wise or offensively, I think we will see Fiza bringing out some heroes that we want them to hit the intangibles and everything like that. So you might see like Fiza Spitfires out there, a an aggressive Fiza who gets pulled in with Spitfire for her United. And gets free stacks of her level 1. And now all of a sudden Spitfire is going right through all those intangibles. And hey, remember that cloak and dagger tactic of being intangible to protect against the Spitfire? Well, suddenly that might go away. Uh, plus she has Field Medic, which can heal Spitfire if you try to take her out. Spitfire's got her own healing. You might see Fiza paired up with aggressive people. You might see Fiza paired up defensively with tanks and like super strong agents where Fiza support, Colossus is the wall, and then the agent hides behind those two and just like rips it up with something like that or, or just dots. Heavy health and just the agent is like dot based or something like that. So that's definitely um, a meta that we could see aggressive Fiza and defensive Fiza. The other thing that I definitely think we will continue to see, because there is no stopping it right now, and there's been nothing really to change it, we'll still see Spit Lords. Uh, right now, Spitfire and Star Lord had, I think, the best records that I saw on people last season. If somebody had a relatively balanced record, to me it seemed like they were doing spit lord i actually the entire season saw one team that had a winning record on defense and it was a spit lord i managed to beat him but the guy was extremely strong and when i looked at his record he actually had a winning team on defense and i was like wow this is the first time i've seen this and i don't know how many seasons over here so i think we will definitely still continue to see Spit Lords, for absolute sure. Uh, also, the Worthy. We will definitely continue to see, and I'm just going to straight up call them Worthy Dagger, because I'll lump Cloak and Dagger in 
with the worthy because you know cloak and dagger is often teamed up with angrier or null or curse i had her teamed up with spitfire on defense in the beginning until they started losing consistently enough where i was like well it's not risky for me to change it now i can't do that much worse and i changed it to cloak and dagger and curse and it balanced out a bit uh we will definitely continue to see cloak and dagger and the worthy but there's going to be a tweak to it. Fiza's presence means the risk reward of the debuff ISO slot is going to change. Now, think about you're not worthy. Technically, that's up every round for him. But when you apply lethal or endemic, he can't do it every single round. So, in the past, who cares? You're putting out a really powerful debuff in relation to that. The fact that Faiza laughs at that, or laughs at Endemic, which is actually on my Cloak and Dagger, um, that's going to change the risk-reward structure of the debuff slot. And I think what will be smarter for people is that they will begin to favor the ISOs that do not increase debuff cooldowns. This one right over here, Blackout, let me tell you, this makes this up every six rounds. I mean, uh, utterly horrible because, my, you know, my Cloak and Dagger was never able to pull off a second one of these in combat. There was maybe a few times where she could have had it not been for Endemic. Well, when Fiza can turn off Endemic and turn off the spare, this now becomes... 90% risk and only 10% reward. So I think we will see people change to debuff psychic or debuff vampiric and straining to balance out the risk reward of this because they don't increase the cooldown anymore. So I don't think you're going to see despair nulls and endemic curth. However, Fear me, even though it's up every round, we know for many, many PvP seasons now, Kurth puts it out once and then never really comes back to it unless she has exploded several runes. Unless she's exploding a runes and people are living, she never does fear me again. So, we may continue to see Kurth run the longer cooldown ones on fear me, because she's never really going to come back to them to begin with. But Love Me, I think most smart people will not uh, really increase the cooldown on this. Unless they're trying to get her off Love Me and into something else. That's a possibility. You may still want to increase the cooldown of Love Me so that she only goes for one person. And then starts beating the shit out of people. Rather than spamming Love Me, which unfortunately neuters Kurth pretty badly. And that's pretty much about it. I think we will see an anti fiza meta, and I will be dealing with that in its own video during the week, because that's going to need a video unto itself, pretty much. Um, I, I will give a nod over to the fact that one of the things that I think will be, because this is going to probably be a meta, although I think this has less of a chance of being a meta than any of the others. Non-removable debuff meta. People who can do internal bleeding, uh, nulls meteor stacks, especially with other magic out there that can maybe make it so the meteors stick over magic warding until, of course, Fiza comes and erases all the debuffs and then the only thing left is a meteor stack and magic warding pushes it off. But, like, internal bleeding, pain, fixers' minds, cursed runes, we, we may see a non-removable meta come up. I don't think the defense will do it, but I do think offense may start shifting into putting out debuffs that Fiza just simply can't turn off. And that'll be interesting. Although, Fixer right now, we need to play around with him and see if he's still broken. His last wave wasn't exploiting anything the last time, but um, 
you know, your internal bleeders, Electra and Songbird and uh, Sweats Devil over here, to name a few, th this might be a big thing next season. You can't lock them down with the spare plus a non-removable. Doom may also come back because Doom procs when she cleans it. Unless she prevents Doom first and then you try to lay Doom. But if Doom is out there and she's like, oh guys, we got Doom and she cleans it, she's going to hurt the team. So we may see a non-removable debuff meta or a meta where we focus on things that if she cleans it off, it's going to hurt. But we'll, we'll deal with that in a anti fiza video. But that's pretty much what I think we'll be seeing in Season 32. I think we'll see a little bit of the Drain meta and the Psychic meta coming forward. Although the Tactician suit is going to get counter countered by the Residual meta. We're going to still see a Worthy Dagger meta. And I think we will definitely still see Spitlord type teams. And then we, we, we will get a new meta of things around FISA. Potentially Night America, but maybe not on defense. I think maybe we'll see him on, on offense. But, uh, yep, that's my video. Let me know what you guys think about it down below. And if I fail to cover some things from Season 31 that existed, you know, in Diamond and Vibranium and everything... Um, I, I do apologize. Let me know about it down below. I'm mean, being up in Ada. I do know things were different in other leagues. I had a few friends continue to complain about Angrier when I just really never even saw him that much up in Adamantium compared to other things. So that's the video, folks. Have a good one.